So dudes, I'm gonna show you how to get in the consulate without getting spawn peaked. Anyway, this video is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps offers you the only two FDA approved products for hair loss in men for a reasonable price. And you can find out if it's right for you all from the comfort of your own home. Making sure that you don't have to start that hat collection anytime too soon. Let's just like hats. I, this is a pretty cool hat. I like this hat. What's appealing to me about Keeps is the ability to do so from your computer desk without having to take the hassle out of your day to going to a doctor's office. If you notice something, it's better to do something now rather than later. So if you're interested, go to keeps.com slash Gregor. Get 50% off of your purchase just for going to that link. Couldn't get any easier than that. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. And let me know whenever you get around to making a product that makes your beard hair look a little bit better than that. A lot of people don't like playing on consulate because there's so much window play and it's really easy to get spawn peaked, especially if you spawn police line over here. You can even get spawn peaked by the yellow stairs window if you spawn by the northwest side. And the reason that consulate has a reputation as a monkey map is because it's it's great for monkey play. There's a ton of different staircases and there's tons of windows for people to run around and it can be really difficult to cut off rotations by roaming defenders. But the first thing you want to do to make sure that you know what you're getting into when you're attacking consulate, and this is for any map in the game really, is to figure out, first of all, where did they pick the bomb site? And then once you do that, you can kind of work your way uh, and, and guesstimate exactly where the enemy is going to be. So let's say if they're doing a garage take, you want to drone out circle desk first. And there's a lot, there's lots of nook and, nooks and crannies that people like to hide in, especially in here. People will prone and try to uh, hide like a rat behind the circle desk here. So, pro so drone this out, look through antechamber, look through piano, and then if anybody is obviously like perched up on these windows here, then you don't want to just like run out like, hey, look at me, right? And like, maybe not take that gunfight unless you're confident enough to do so. I don't know, it, you know, it's up to you if you want to take that aim duel or not, just be ready. And then sometimes you're going to have people hiding here in benches to swing on you when they get the intel that you're coming into uh, the main lobby. Sorry, th this, this is benches. This particular spot here is benches because there's benches in it. And this is bottom spiral. People will uh, sometimes hide on cams here bottom spiral. But once you kind of get an idea of this section of the map for a garage take, you're pretty much good. And then the one thing that you should probably be worried about is this window up here in connector. When you're making your way towards the front of the building, it's generally a good idea to have a dedicated flank watch on this map just because uh, it's it's really just roaming is very integral to keeping consulate held together for the defense. So you want to open these windows up. And it'll take you a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Maybe get somebody with an LMG to do this if you have like a Capital with an M249 or a Zof with her LMG is a lot more common now. But what does opening these windows do? Well, for one, it lets your it lets your dedicated flank watch Think think of the guy who's who's playing on this piece of cover as like your dedicated overwatch as you try to clear out uh, Garage and get the wall open He's gonna be making sure that nobody is rotating through anti into piano and down yellow to try and take fights with your guys Taking open uh, uh, opening up the garage and he's also just he's generally gonna be like going through cams Very frequently going back and forth between them. Maybe you can have a drone up by the uh, by the connector uh, window up here over by projector because people like to peek from this you should be mindful of this run out here if you have a nomad, which I would highly suggest bringing on this map if you don't have her. Uh, you can nomad off uh, these two windows here. Uh, this is this is often called suicide because it's it's a really risky run out to do, but it is very common at uh, in in ranked elo just because there's not there's not that much stakes involved. There's not you're not playing for money on the line, right? So people like to run around and just play Call of Duty. I think you can get away with not even nomading this door. Some people like to do it. It's you know it's it's your game. You can do what you want, but. As long as you're mindful and you have quick enough reflexes, you can really, like, cut off, as long as you're actively playing these positions, take gunfights with people that are running out from main, anti, piano, and maybe sometimes yellow stairs. You don't really have to worry about these windows as much. It's really rare uh, for people to be playing on this side of the map because there's only two places that they can peek from, right? One of the advantages of uh, running out on this side of the map so much is that there's so many different windows that the defenders can peek from. So it's more difficult for attackers to counter that because there are more options that they have to be mindful of. Here, there's only two, right? So if you open these up, yeah, like somebody could peek these in theory, uh, but it's not going to happen as often, right? And it's a little bit more dangerous to do because you're just taking a gunfight on one piece of cover that you can pre-aim, whereas there's multiple windows that you can peek from over here. So that's why droning out on this map is so freaking important. That's why, generally speaking, on consulate, 
especially in competitive play, you're going to see a lot of Intel characters. You're going to see Sam. Uh, you're going to see Sam for his Sam cams. You're going to see a lot of Flank Watch. You're going to see Nomad, especially in North America where Nomad's more popular. Now, I know a lot of people are still upset about Buck losing his frag grenades, but this is one of the few maps where Buck actually gets to shine pretty well. The reason for that is because in order to cut off the verticality of the map, he can do so by bucking out stuff from below. See, like, this is a really common playing spot. I'll just show you the angle of connector looking out towards the police line spawn. But even if you're not playing on the top floor for the bomb sites, it's really common for defenders to open up a bunch of holes, right? And then look down into the entrances here in main. Even antsy, right? And of course you can peek from this window here and then catch people coming out of police line. Or that main entrance over there. But, if you get close enough, as Buck, you can go from below here. And now all of a sudden that guy has to contest that position, right? So Buck is really good at getting defenders out of their comfort zone on this map because a lot of the floors on this map are soft and verticality is really important to the defenders here and Buck is really good at countering that vertical play. Sometimes it's really common for Buck, uh, in particular, or maybe a Zof with her, uh, with her impact grenades, to Buck out lines of sight just as dedicated flank watch, right? Just to give defenders new off angles that they have to contest as they go around the map. So you'll have maybe a guy here in bathroom just watching the yellow stairs, right? Just watching yellow stairs as your, uh, as your sledge goes over here and tries to open up stuff. You can have somebody play here and then cut off that rotate with the guy coming up yellow to contest your, uh, your buddy here in piano. Pre-placed drones on this map are really important. It's really good to have a drone in piano at the very least. It's also nice to have a drone over here by the statue. I place this very often. Just because also if you die, then you're going to give your teammates like some kind of useful information useful kind of information when you're dead, right? You can kind of hide the drone here in the, uh, in the brush. And the cool part about drones that a lot of people don't really give enough credit for is that, yeah, they can offer visual line of sight on people and visual confirmation of people, but there's also a microphone in the drone. You can also make audio calls off of the drone. So, if the drone is hidden here, you don't really have to, like, like put it out here where it's really easily going to get shot. If you hide it here, Chances are defenders are going to run by and probably not even see it if you conceal it well enough. And you can use that as a microphone depending on its position. If you hear audio in the right side of your ear, then you know that somebody's probably going to be by yellow stairs or bench. And if you hear it on the left, they're probably going to be by, uh, by top spiral or visa hallway. Now, if you're in ranked and the defenders are playing first, uh, they're probably going to ban Nomad. Because they want to get as aggressive as possible. That's just the meta for consulate ranked. Which means that you probably want to ban Valkyrie. Because if you don't, or at the very least if you don't bring an IQ, then she's going to throw a cam out here like in this palm tree or something. See how there's so much open space for Valk to throw cams around and sometimes it's just going to be a pain in the ass to try and find it? You're going to be dealing with a Valk that's going to be going back and forth between cams constantly, right? And you're going to have to try to approach the building dealing with a Valk who's going who's gonna to instantly try and swing on you as you might be out here and then get shot from, from that run out. Or this run out. Or this window. Or that, 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 right? It's just a pain in the ass. If you're, especially if you're in solo queue, I would probably just try to get your teammates to ban Valk if they don't bring an IQ. So this is a really common run out for defenders to do here by yellow window. People will try to run out here and then maybe contest a guy here on the admin repel or try to get a guy off of an angle out here in the open or just swing here or just peek here, right? And then run back. So you usually want to bring a nomad for this. You're going to nomad off this door. So why is Nomad better than Gridlock? Nomad is generally better than Gridlock because... Think of it like this, right? If a Gridlock froze her tracks... I'm gonna pretend to be a defender. If a Gridlock froze her tracks somewhere to cut off, uh, to cut off a run out or cut off a, a flank... I can just do this. Right? I can shoot them and then I can just... Whatever. It's no big deal. With a Nomad... Unless I have an impact grenade... I, I can't I can't do anything, right? I can't do jack squat. Located. Same thing here. Really common. Let's say you're trying to clear out piano here. Obviously the bombs are here. I can't change that when I'm attacking first. But let's say you're trying to clear out piano and you want to cut off the benches rotate. Boom. Done. Unless unless usually a vigil is gonna pocket some impact grenades just for this purpose. But unless the guy has impact grenades and impacts it here, one, it's gonna make a sound cue. It's gonna instantly reveal where he's where he's coming from, so you're gonna be able to react to it. And if he, doesn't, if he doesn't have impact grenades, then he has to find another way to flank you. 
So that's just a little thing about Nomad and Gridlock and why a lot of people tend to pick Nomad over Gridlock. I've seen some instances where people will double up on a Nomad and a Gridlock, but you're usually trading away a lot of utility clear for that, so it's not that common. But that's just something to keep in mind. Jeez. Come on, Jeez, timing. Buddy. Don't fuck me over. Right Don't fuck right. me over, timing. Right oh, he what a rat! One, two, what a rat! Last two bathrooms. Last two bathrooms. Last two bathrooms. One might go uh, kitchen hall. Oh. What? He's the Rat what King! What Which was one? that, dude? Y'all ever seen the Nutcracker? That was a. That was a no. Y'all ever seen the Nutcracker? No, I can't say. That, I can't say that I have seen the Nutcracker. This. This is him. This is him. 